Well, praise the Lord in Jesus' holy and blessed name. This is the ministry of Jesus Christ, Brother Thomas, with you here today. And today, word of encouragement and exhortation, a little understanding of the wonderful word of God. It is a beautiful thing to know the word of God, to believe the word of God. Yes, indeed. Oh, and indeed it is. Today, from Romans chapter 15, let's look at a few things here. Brothers and sisters, it is so easy to look around the world today and see all of the evil that is taking place, the immorality, all that, not even to speak of it as it is. There is so much that leads brothers and sisters in Christ astray and stands as a weapon against the unbeliever in coming to the Lord. Yes, it is. It truly is. Satan doesn't have to make a Satan worshiper out of unbelievers to keep them, you know, to take them to hell, for them to go to hell. Just keep them from coming to Jesus to get in the way of that in whatever way possible. And today, certainly there are so many ways in which the devil is leading people astray, keeping them from looking to the truth. Oh, and amen. And to also work against the body of Christ, to divide and conquer, to hinder growth and maturity, to rob us of the blessings of glory and praise to God of a life lived in Christ Jesus. And he's hard at it, hard at it. And so we ought to be hard at the other. And that is growing in our knowledge and our understanding of God. And that happens through the word. We learn of him through his word. And he reveals himself in it, for that is why he gave it to us, to reveal himself to us through his word, that we might be strengthened and encouraged, find comfort and consolation, patience, steadfastness and endurance, these things that we might proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to the lost, that they might hear and know and believe that God is true, that God is true. So from Romans 15, starting at verse one, we read this. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, and amen, and amen. Those of us who are stronger in the Lord ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, this indeed, strengthening them, encouraging them, that they might become strong. For we too were once weak, or that is, lacking in maturity, childlike, immature. And so we ought to be caring for one another in the body of Christ. When we do so, the devil can't get into it. Can't get into it. 
He leads people astray within the body of Christ when he's the voice they're listening to instead of God's voice, instead of the very spirit of God who dwells in them. Through God's word and those whom God has chosen to speak that word, the truth can be known. The weak can be strengthened. Yes, indeed. And then there are seeds planted and watered and God gives the increase and souls are saved. It's a beautiful thing. And so we don't set out to please ourselves, but to please one another not in lying to them or deceiving them, but telling them the truth in love. Yes, indeed. But we do them no favors if we do not tell them the whole truth. If we leave out the parts we think they might not like. Bad idea. Truly but to tell them the whole truth and to tell them that truth in love and honesty, straightforward, but with caring, beat them up, hug them up, <laughs> love them up, share with them. And what we who are stronger in the faith, what those who are stronger in the faith, that they're not, you're not going to lose for having done this. It's not like, well, what a waste of my time. I'm too cool for that. No, no. It was what Christ did. It's what Christ has done. In all things, he pleased not himself, but the Father. In his deity. He had the freedom to choose an easier path if he chose it. But he desired the will of the Father. And hence, he did what needed to be done according to the Father's will. And we too, therefore, do that which ought to be done according to the Father's will, not our own, and when we do that, when our will lines up with God's will, no oh, happy are ye. <laughs> yes, indeed. There is a joy and a comfort and a peace that comes in our will being in line with God's will. God's will is perfect. Our will is not. And so... If we go off in a direction that is not his, in line with his will, and then, 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 we see glorious truth, glorious things happen. That's true. Oh, how glorious is truth it is. And it's wonderful because he also makes the mention of the Old Testament reference and then says, those things which were, what? For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Well, at that time, it would be the, what we call the Old Testament that he, those things which were written aforetime. Of course, now it's all written aforetime. Then it was the Old Testament. They were written for our learning. Yes, I know there are many today who would want you to not, don't go, you don't need to read that old stuff. It doesn't have anything to do with us today. We're modern. That's that old stuff. Even apply that to the New Testament or pick out certain books or sections and say, this is what you need. You don't need all that other stuff. That's not true. That's not true. 
These things that were written aforetime were written for our learning. And they are profitable. Indeed. For in them we learn of God. Jesus would say to the Pharisees, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and they are which testify of me. Yes. That we might find encouragement and comfort. That we might find consolation. Patience, patience, endurance, steadfastness, steadfast. That which we know to be true, to believe it, to proclaim it, live it in glorious living color <laughs> to God, to God, and before our fellow man in truth. Then a witness is given. One that strengthens the body of Christ and one by which the spirit of God brings conviction upon the sinner that the sinner will see and know that they are in fact sinners, repent and turn to God and be saved the only way they can be saved by the finished work of Jesus Christ, that which is given to us in the scriptures how he came and bled and died and rose again the third day. He was buried. He died a physical death. Yes, he did. And on the third day, he rose. His sacrifice, he giving of himself, the ultimate, one sacrifice for all, for your sins and mine. Jesus came, bled, died, and rose again we might have life. He, the just one, the justifier, that we might be just, not in ourselves, but in him. And that's a glorious and profound and beautiful truth that all need to hear, that they might know and believe and be saved. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus. As he gave himself, we ought to give ourselves for one another. As the church age approaches its end, and we do believe it is, I, I've believed since I was saved that the Lord was would come in my lifetime or at least very close to it. And to this day, 48 years later, I still believe that. And there are those who say, well, Brother Thomas, it's been 48 years and Jesus hasn't come yet. Yes, that's true. But all that means is it's closer now than it was then. Doesn't mean he isn't. <laughs> Just means it's closer now. And therefore, all the more reason to proclaim it and to speak it forth. For I truly do believe that there will be someone that hears the gospel through this ministry who will live to see that moment come. And when I go home to be with the Lord until they see the Lord come, we're that close. We're that close. So today, brothers and sisters in Christ, may we set our eyes on the things of God and his word. And it's a wonderful thing. For the things that were written for were written for our learning. This is akin to what Paul would write in, to Timothy. For all scripture is given by inspiration of God or God breathed by inspiration of God and are profitable for reproof, correction, for instruction in righteousness, for doctrine, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished, that you and I, we, the members of the body of Christ, would be thoroughly furnished, not half, sort of, kind of, or a little, but thoroughly furnished. Yes. To know we might walk in them, that God would be glorified, 
the body of Christ strengthened and sinners brought to repentance. A glorious truth indeed. So today, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. His example. And learn of him in the word which teaches us of him. The word that is God revealed to us. That's why he gave us the word of God. To reveal himself to us. And to those of us who know, to share that with others. And for folks out there who don't, that you might know, that you might know the one and true living God and Jesus Christ, the Lord, and know him as your savior today, before he comes, that when he comes, it will be for your salvation to see it complete in glorification for those who do not, oh God, there is a judgment for them, and they will have their reward as well. So today, if you don't know, come to know him today. He loves you, he came and bled and died for you, he rose the third day that you too might have life. And it is an abundant life in the glory and praise of God, in the things of God, in God's truth, a truth shared in love and in Jesus' name. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. So today, be of good cheer, brothers and sisters. Be comforted. Be encouraged. Be steadfast and have hope for Jesus is coming again. Tell them that they may know in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen and amen.